Are you on the edge of a mortgage cliff with no way out? Do you feel stuck in a mortgage prison? You can make things okay, but you need to plan ahead. If you wait for too long, you will be more stressed and less rational when you have to make a decision. If your fixed rate expires in six months, then start looking for better deals and options now. If you're already on a variable rate, then start planning your next move now if interest rates keep rising. Whatever you do, don't leave it to the last minute because you might end up in a worse situation. During your research and planning process, be careful of who you listen to and watch out for conflict of interest. Some people might have a stake in your financial decision and might try to influence you in their favor. Who am I talking about? Have you recently gotten calls or flyers from real estate agents who's wanting you to sell? Their income depends on how many properties are sold. So they want more transactions in the market. And the same goes for mortgage brokers who make money from new loans and refinancing. Brokers can only offer you the products that they have access to and not all the products in the market. I'm not saying that they're bad people. Everyone needs to make a living. But the nature of their jobs and how they get paid from their jobs might affect their advice. So you need to do more research and talk to more people so that you can make an informed decision about what's right for you. Don't let anyone pressure you into doing something that you're not 100% comfortable with. The number one problem that a lot of borrowers have is that they want to refinance to a lower rate, but they can't. And if this is you, then you might be facing one or both of these common hurdles. Serviceability, and equity. Serviceability is your ability to pay the loan over time and it all depends on your income and expenses. If your income has dropped or your expenses has gone up then lenders will be less willing to refinance your loan. Equity on the other hand is the difference between the value of your property and the amount you owe on the home loan and the gold standard that lenders look for is at least 20% equity or an LVR of 80% or less. You might not have enough equity to refinance if you over pay for your home and not enough time has gone by for you to build enough equity or you bought your home with a smaller deposit and haven't paid off much of the principal or the property market has fallen and lowered the value of your home and you could be unlucky and face all three of these situations but don't give up there are options for you if you are mortgage trapped two Australian lenders have recently changed the lending criteria in order to make it easier for people to refinance resume group and Westpac have cut their assessment rate for people who fail the stand test, allowing more borrowers to escape from their mortgage prison. This could cause other lenders to also do the same because they don't want to miss out on refinancing customers. Now, if you've exhausted all your refinancing options and you still can't get a yes, then you can still negotiate with your current lender for a better rate. And don't be afraid to ask to speak to the manager. Managers often have more power to offer better deals to customers compared to frontline employees. What they can do all depends on the internal policies of the company, but it never hurts to ask. Another way to reduce your cost is to stop paying features that you're not using. For example, do you have a package home loan? If you do, then speak to your lender to see whether downgrading to a more basic home loan will help you to save money on interest and fees. Now you can get the best deal by shopping around and negotiating, but you still need to figure out what your limit is. Regardless of whether you are successful or not successful with your refinancing, you need to work out how much you can afford on your home if interest rates keep going up. Will your budget be able to handle it if interest rates continue rising for another six months? What about 10 months? What about a year? You need to factor in in your plan what your interest rate limit is and what your options are when you get closer to that limit. Really work out what's priority and what's nice to have. It's perfectly normal to get used to a certain type of lifestyle and the line between what's essential and what's not can become blurry and you may need to face some tough questions. At the end of the day, no one can answer these tough questions except you. You have to decide what matters most to you and what you can live without. This process of working out your interest rate limit will help you to get clarity on what really matters to you and your family. Once you work out your limits, then test them out. Live as if you already have the higher interest rate and see how it affects your lifestyle. 
this will give you some confidence that you can handle it if things get worse. And with the extra money that you save, you can put that towards additional payments towards your home loan once it switches from fixed to variable. Or if you're already on variable, then pay down more of your principal and increase your equity. What if I fix my rates on my home loan? Is that a good way of dealing with uncertainty of rising interest rates? Well, it depends. When I bought my first home, the interest rates were much higher than what they are now. And many people that I knew, including myself, were really considering to fix the rates on our home loans. And some did and some didn't. Over time, the rates started to drop. For those of us who stayed on variable, were very relieved. But it could have easily gone the other way. The economy goes through cycles of up and down. But what no one can predict is exactly how long these cycles will last for. So even if a fixed rate seems more stable, it's still a gamble. You have to assess the risks. If you're feeling overwhelmed or just in a second opinion about your financial situation, then speaking to a financial counselor can help. These are non-for-profit organizations that work for the community. In Australia, it's the National Debt Helpline and they used to be part of Salvos, so you know they're good. Now, during these times, their services are high in demand, so you should book your appointment as soon as possible to avoid long waiting times. If you've done all these steps and you're still in trouble, then what do you do? Is it time to sell? Not necessarily. There are many options that lenders have to help you in the short term and long term. Watch my next video where I explain these options and their pros and cons. Thanks for watching.